Hey, everybody. I'm Zach. And I'm Jesse. You're watching Disruptive Investing. Robots. Will you give them up? Robot. So even the word is new to us. The word robot comes from the Czech word robota, which means forced labor or drudgery. It was first used in this context by the Czech playwright Karel Kapek in his 1920 play R.U.R. or Rossum's Universal Robots. So the word robot is only about 100 years old. Yeah, and honestly, it wasn't really popularized here in the U.S. until the famous science fiction writer Isaac Asimov used it in his 1942 short story, Run Around. In fact, it was Isaac Asimov who first came up with his now famous Three Laws of Robotics. A robot may not injure a human being. A robot must obey orders given to a human unless it conflicts with the first law. And a robot must protect its own existence um, as long as the protection does not conflict with the first or second laws. And, he, you know, he wrote a lot of stories showing how those laws weren't perfect, right. which is another interesting piece. But robot is such a powerful idea, right? It's a smart machine that can take away human drudgery to do all those tasks that we'd rather not do ourselves. And I'm not talking about a tool or a dumb machine. I mean, humans have invented plenty of those. This hammer is a good tool, right? It allows us to bang nails into wood and hold two pieces of wood together, for instance. Awesome tool. I say this as a carpenter who has been using a hammer my whole life. But the thing is, I still have to do all the hammer swinging. The hammer is not gonna bang those nails in by itself. And this excavator, another awesome tool or machine, it can do the work of dozens, if not hundreds of humans in a day. I mean, imagine digging trenches or moving all that dirt and gravel without it. But again, it needs a human to sit inside to be its eyes and brain. So along comes this idea of a machine that doesn't need humans to run it. Wow. I mean, that's a powerful idea. But alas, the idea came, like so many do, before we had the technology to make such a robot a reality. Fast forward to the computer age, and now we had enough tech to make these. That's Joseph Engelberger. He's an American physicist, engineer, and entrepreneur, widely hailed as the father of industrial robotics. Engelberger played a significant role in the development of robotics by licensing the original patent awarded to inventor George Devil. Engelberger developed the first industrial robot in the United States, the Unimate, in the 1950s. Engelberger founded Unimation Incorporated in 1961 in Danbury, Connecticut, where they designed and built some of the first industrial robots. And these robotic arms that you could program and do repetitive tasks, they took off. I mean, according to the World Robotics Report published in 2022, there are about 3.5 million operational robots in factories around the globe. And if you're wondering which countries use robots the most, South Korea leads the pack with 1,000 robots installed for every 10,000 employees. That ratio drops off quickly with Japan and Germany at a ratio of about 4%, followed by China, Sweden, which surprised me, and the United States at a ratio of about 3%. Now, at an average cost of about a quarter of a million dollars, you might ask, why would South Korea be installing so many robots? And that is because each robot can not only work all day without getting tired or sloppy, but it can work faster and more accurately than a human all with the added benefits of not needing a bathroom break, food, health insurance, safety training, or a parking place for its car. So let's say that today's bolted to the factory floor robots can do the work of three to four humans. It's no wonder that businesses have millions of them installed in factories worldwide. But you savvy investors already knew about these robots. You could invest in robot manufacturers like KUKA, ABB, Fanuc, Yaskawa. And the thing is, early in my investing career, I thought it was so smart, I thought, Robot arms are what every factory needs, right? So I'll invest in industrial robot manufacturers and I'll make a killing. So I did. I invested in KUKA and Fanuc and ABB. Here's ABB's stock chart from 2000 to today. Do you see the problem? I'm not saying I couldn't have made money trading the stock. It did go up and down a lot, but I'm a long-term investor. And for the most part, ABB just hovered between $15 and $25 a share. Now, it is doing well today, but even if I had bought at $25 a share in, say, 2011, that's only a 2x in 13 years, or about 7.7% .7 annual rate of return. Not bad, but definitely not what we expect as disruptive investors. And it's a similar story with the other industrial robot manufacturers. Their stocks never really took off like we had expected. And that really does make sense. Yeah. Do you look to hammer manufacturers to make a killing in the stock market? No. Why? 
Because anyone can make a hammer. <laughs> right. If you make a hammer, which arguably every carpenter needs, but if you make a hammer and sell it too expensively, then I'll just look to another company to buy my hammers. And so even though you and I can't make an industrial robot, many companies can. So none of them can corner the market. Unless. What? Well, what if a company could make the next generation of robot? One that wasn't bolted to the factory floor. So it could move around the factory and it could learn how to do complicated tasks without a lot of fancy software coding by fancy software engineers. Of course, we're talking about these, Tesla's humanoid robot. Optimus Gen 2 can already do some amazing stuff. Check this out. And what makes Tesla's Optimus robot so amazing isn't just the fingers bits and the walking bits. I mean, don't get us wrong, that is truly amazing. But the mind-blowing, completely disruptive part is the neural net learning it can do. Because Tesla has learned so much about how to train their cars to drive themselves. And then they took all that and applied it to this Optimus. So it can learn like we do, only faster. Funny thing is, We've been talking about how disruptive humanoid robots will be well before these latest videos came out. Back when Elon first announced that Tesla was starting to work on them. Back when a Tesla bot was just a guy in a robot costume dancing. But for most people, most investors even, the problem about seeing disruptions in technology is that you have to have five things. Number one, a really good imagination. You can't just say, I have a good imagination. It's like a muscle. To make it strong, you have to use it. And believe me, most people have had it beaten out of them. Number two, you have to be a contrarian. What do I mean? Okay, so I mean, since most of the rest of the people in this world do not have good imaginations, but think they do, you will not hear about how smart your ideas are. You will feel like you are all alone with your crazy ideas about the disruptive future that is coming. Number three, you will have to keep up with the real news of what is being worked on by companies and innovators, not the marketing department's press releases with CGI videos. You'll have to be very discerning and constantly diving deep to find out what's really going on and who the players are. Number four, that takes grit and determination, which of course most investors unfortunately don't have. Most investors want to be spoon-fed the answers to the test. Here's your stock picks du jour. Yum, yum, eat them up. And the fifth thing that you need is a longer time horizon than your trader cousins. Most investors today are nothing more than traders. They, not traitors, traders. They love the thrill of the trade. It's like betting. They, they go from one trade to the next looking for that dopamine release of making money. And traders do make money on some of their trades. But there's a very human trait that we share that lies to us and overinflates the winning bets and represses the losing bets. So we walk away from the blackjack table or the stock trading app telling ourselves that we're winners, even if we're not. To invest. To really invest in a disruptive technology like humanoid neural net learning robots means putting your money down well before the robots start appearing in factories or people's homes. Because if we start investing when the robots are already a reality, it means that we have passed up on the really amazing returns of early investing and instead settle for the returns of a late stage, low risk investment. Now, disclaimer, we are not financial advisors. Do not take two guys on the internet as your financial advisors. A financial advisor needs to know your situation, your level of risk, all of your goals, and they need to be certified financial advisors, okay? So what we're going to talk about and what we do talk about is just what we're thinking, right? Do your own research. Investing involves risk. But at this point, we want to get to the title of this episode. Robots, will you give them up? And here's why most people don't make big money investing. They just can't see what's coming. So I'd like you to try this exercise and be honest with yourself because that's the only way you're going to learn anything. Okay, if we went back in time, let's say to 2006, right before the iPhone came out. And I said to you, in about 10 years, you'll have this rectangle in your pocket, this smartphone, and you'll be so addicted to it and all that it can do that if I ask you to give it to me for one week in exchange for $100, a look of terror will come into your eyes and you'll say, heck no, I can't live without my rectangle for one week. Remember, this is what I said to you in 2006. So what would your response have been? I would have said, no, there's no rectangle that I'll have in my pocket in 10 years that I couldn't give up for a week. I'd gladly take your $100. 
What could I possibly need this rectangle for so badly that I couldn't live without it for a week? I have access to the internet on my desktop computer, and I have a telephone. Are you sure you'll be able to do your banking that week without it? I would respond to myself or to you. <laughs> and I would have said to my future self, banking on my rectangle, I can just drive down to my bank or log in with my desktop computer. I won't need a rectangle for banking. Are you sure you won't need to text anyone that week? Text someone? How about go on your social media? Social media, like MySpace and Facebook? I already pop onto those things using my desktop computer. So why would I need a smartphone to do that? Okay, okay. Uh, how about calling an Uber? Or getting directions? Or finding out the weather? Or getting the news? Or unlocking the doors in your house? Or unlocking your Tesla? Or what are you talking about? I have a car, which I put gas in every week. And I have a GPS, which tells me where to go. It is called Garmin or TomTom. -tom, and it tells me to take a left or a right in 200 feet. And I sometimes miss it because it has a very poor display. But you know what? That's okay because I'm used to that. And the weather and the news, I see it on, on my television, which is a box that I have in my house. And unlocking the door of my house, I have metal implements in my pocket, which I keep on a, on a loop, a metal loop. And I put, the, I put the metal implements into the door of my house and I turn it. Into and if it's the right key... It will turn and it will unlock the door to my house, uh, to my home. And often I go, honey, where are my keys? Yes. Do you see how absurd my question would have seemed just 18 years ago? Most people would have said that they would take my $100 just like Jesse did, and they would give me their smartphone for the week. That's what they would think they would do. What would you have said in 2006? And what would you say now? Would you take the $100 and give up your smartphone for a week? Remember, be honest. And the same would be true if I asked you about other human disruptive inventions before they came out. For instance, the refrigerator. If I explained about that, would you say you would need it? How about the television? How about the airplane? How about the automobile? How about electricity? How about indoor plumbing? The microwave oven? The internet? Before they became reality, it was just too much for most people's brains to comprehend. Why? Because they couldn't imagine this next thing. The first radar range microwave oven was sold in 1955. It was invented just 10 years earlier in 1945. How many people would have said this if the inventor, Percy Spencer, had told them about his invention? A box that you can put cold food in and then just 60 seconds later it comes out piping hot? Impossible! I've never experienced such a thing. That sounds like science fiction. How would that even work? Would it blow up my house? Even if you could make such a thing, it would be wildly expensive. And today, there are an estimated 1.1 billion, billion microwaves in use worldwide. And the cheapest microwaves cost less than $50. So getting back to humanoid neural net learning robots, ask yourself. Will you give up your robot for one week if I give you, say, $1,000? Today, most people would say, yes, sure, I'll take a thousand bucks. Because most people don't imagine what this robot will be doing for you. Can you live without your Tesla bot picking up your dirty laundry and washing it, drying it, folding it, and putting it all away? Can you live without it sweeping, vacuuming, and mopping your floors? Doing all your dishes and pots and pans. Washing your windows. Mowing your lawn. Bringing out the trash and bringing in the barrels. Putting away your groceries. Cooking your meals. Walking your dog and picking up after it. Helping your kids with their homework. Doing your taxes. Rotating your tires. Painting your house. Shoveling the snow from your driveway and walkways. Bringing you a beer in your slippers. Giving you a back or a foot massage. We're just getting started here on all the things your Tesla bot will be doing for you. Do you really think that you'll be able to live without your Tesla bot for a whole week? Disruptive investors, wake the f*** <laughs> up. We are about to be introduced to the most amazing product humans have ever experienced. And do you know how I know that you won't want to give up this robot for even a week? Because humans have fought wars over this. Even as recently as 150 years ago, millions of people in the U.S., killed their fellow Americans to keep slavery, to keep what Tesla bot will do, work for you, do whatever you tell it to do. That is such an amazing thing. Not the human slavery part, obviously, but not having to do the drudgery, the repetitive dirty tasks. Once people experienced that, even though it involved enslaving other humans, they didn't want to give it up. 
Instead, they convinced themselves that a whole race of people were not really humans just so they wouldn't have to give up having all these tasks done for them. We're about to get that in a product that is not immoral, that does not involve slavery. It will be cheap, safe, energy efficient, and humane. And just like most people in industrialized countries now have the internet, smartphones, microwave ovens, believe it or not, most people will have humanoid robots. The question is, my dear disruptive investors, do you have the imagination to see what is coming? And do you have the determination and the foresight to act today on what seems impossible. We're gonna be covering the upcoming Tesla Q1 earnings call right here on Disruptive Investing, so do not change your YouTube dial. Uh, make sure that you hit the subscribe button and the like button, and when you do hit the subscribe button, you can hit the bell notification. You can change that to all if you wanna get all notifications of all the content that we come out with. We only do pretty much one video a week, so you're not gonna get spammed. Although tomorrow we will be doing the earnings call yes. here on Disruptive Investing. And you know, much of the retail and institutional investing world, most of the financial analysts, they will be focused on Tesla's auto sales and delivery numbers. Why did they drop? Are worldwide EV sales in a slump? Are Tesla's profit margins dropping? I'll bet there won't be one meaningful question from the big financial analysts about Tesla bot. And I bet that Tesla share price will fall after hours because Elon won't give the answers that they want to hear. Again, disclaimer, we're not financial advisors. We cannot predict the future. In my opinion, this is your opportunity to invest in robots before most people even understand what's coming. Thank you so much for joining us on Disruptive Investing. We'll see you tomorrow, and then we'll see you next week on Disruptive Investing.